Hey guys, I originally published this review on December 11th and I made a mistake. I misunderstood how the battery was connected to the bike and I thought you needed tools to actually unscrew a cover. What you really need is a four millimeter Allen key that goes into a little slot, kind of unlocks the battery and then it is removable. It can be charged off the bike. I got a bunch of great feedback in the comments about this and I just wanted to update the review. I've actually used a clip from Marin that shows them taking the battery off since I no longer have the demo bike. So again, thank you and I apologize to Marin and anyone who might have been misled by my mistake. On with the updated review. This is the Marin Alpine Trail E2. It's a $6,300 mullet all mountain electric bike. Got 160 millimeters of travel up front, 150 millimeters in the rear. This is the multi-track suspension. So there's really no adjustment needed as you ride. It has a progressive leverage ratio. And so uh, on the smaller bumps, it's dynamically absorbing those smoothly. You hit bigger bumps and it's supposed to just automatically do its thing. We can adjust compression back here as well as rebound, but it's not like a, like a clicker like this where you can just reach down and adjust it on the fly. It requires a three millimeter hex tool. So I thought that was really interesting. And you can see the coil over here. This thing has boost hub spacing, as you probably guess, 110 millimeters up front with 15 millimeter through axle, six millimeter hex bolt on that and 148 millimeters at the rear. So you get the sturdier spoke bracing angle. It's just a wider, sturdier frame. And when I mentioned the mullet before, what we're talking about is a 29 inch diameter wheel up front by 2.5. And then back here, 27.5. So it's a little bit shorter by 2.8. So it's a plus size tire. It's a little bit wider, more air volume, a little bit better traction. Up front, we got the lower attack angle, but a little bit more precise since it's narrower pretty cool to see this bike, especially because it's available in four frame sizes. I'm on the medium here and obviously I'm, I'm not out on the trail. I'm not taking this thing through its paces, but there's some really great reviews out there. People actually jumping with it and taking the trail. I just wanted to explore this and share some of the, the trade-offs that I'm noticing. So we've got awesome brakes. These are Shimano hydraulic SLX, 203 millimeter rotors front and rear. So you get really excellent cooling, a great mechanical advantage, especially for something that is a little bit more aggressive. And you, you'll notice the rake here. So the it's, it's slacker head tube angle and you can really absorb those hits if you're going downhill, doing that all mountain enduro riding. And we've got these rubber bumpers for oversteer so that uh, if the top of the fork impacts the frame, it won't damage the aluminum and instead it hits this rubber. But I noticed that the, the little clicker here does hit the rubber. And so, I, I, and I don't know, it's, it's not the end of the world or anything. You're, you're not gonna have this twist all around and rip out your cables and stuff. But I thought that was interesting that it actually hits the clicker. I wouldn't want that to get damaged. It's a very nice fork. This is a Fox 38, so 38 millimeter stanchions here, black anodized, really burly, so they're thicker than some of the just tamer like trail bikes. This is like really heavy duty. And I love that we've got high speed compression as well as low speed compression. So you can kind of fine tune how this performs in different environments, much like this is trying to do dynamically back here. I love that we've got bottle cage bosses built into the bike. They didn't forget that. And I love that the front fork has this little Fox plastic shield, sort of a mud guard, so you don't get mud kicked up into your face while you're riding. Coming back down to the disc brakes, quad piston calipers, SLX level, de decent stuff. A 38 tooth narrow wide chain ring up here with that E13 plastic guard slash guide so you don't drop the chain. It really locks on to that, that chain ring. And then we've got this heavy duty rubber slap guard, it even protects the bottom a little bit and a really nice derailleur. This is Shimano Dior XT and it does have the one-way clutch so you can tighten this up. If you are going off-road, it's just not gonna bounce around as much, it's a little bit stiffer. And then if you're doing rear wheel maintenance, you can loosen it up and it also makes shifting a little bit easier if you're just cruising around, maybe you're on the way to the trail. Huge spread on this 12-speed cassette, 10 to 51 tooth, so 510% gear ratio, just awesome. Lots of steps for climbing and then also a good spread for bombing down the hill.
You're not gonna get outpaced by this thing. I love the Shimano EP8 motor, mid-drive motor, up to 85 Newton meters of torque on this thing. It's very narrow, it's fairly lightweight when compared to some of the other motors on the market, and it, it offers a high pedal cadence. Of course, it's dynamic, it's giving you uh, rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque. It's measuring these three signals to feel really dynamic and natural. 85 Newton meters is, is pretty great, um, and in my experience, I've had no problem with this. Uh, when, when you think about the whole system, you know, I'm gonna come up to the display in a second, but you can see that the battery on this bike is actually integrated into the down tube. And we've got this plastic shield. The black matches some of the other hardware on the bike, like that suspension fork. Since the bike only comes in one frame color, I was surprised that they didn't go with gray or something that looks a bit more seamless. In just a moment, I'll show you the Marin video where they actually remove the battery. But I want to call out that this isn't using a locking cylinder and key like many other electric bikes. It's just relying on that four millimeter Allen key. So you might want to carry one of these along with you in case you need to take the battery off to reduce the weight of the bike, to put it on your car rack or something. It's best to store lithium ion batteries in a cool, dry location away from extreme cold and extreme heat. So I'm really grateful that it's fairly easy to get this thing off. And keep in mind that if the battery isn't on the bike, the opening where the leads and some of the wires are could be exposed to getting some dust or water if you're transporting this on the back of your car. We're in Marin Mountain Bikes headquarters. My name is Matt Sipes. I'm the Mountain Bike Product Manager, and I'm here to show you how to drop a battery on an Alpine Trail E1 and E2. You will need two tools for this, a flathead screwdriver and a four millimeter Allen wrench. We'll use the flathead screwdriver to very gently and easily remove the rubber plug. Set those aside. We'll then use the four millimeter Allen wrench to locate the release mechanism in the frame. It can be a little tricky, but you'll find it. And you rotate clockwise, quarter turn, that will drop the battery out of the frame. Then there's a metal spring release. You hit that and that will actually allow the battery to come out of the frame, like so. At that point, you can take it upstairs, use your external charging port thingamajinger from Shimano to charge it up, and then you'll plug it in. Do -do 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 Wonderful, we're all charged up, now ready to ride. There is a hole on the bottom that locates into this pin here. And we will very easily and gently put that back in there. And then you will pivot it right in, you'll wait for it. Hear that click? That means your battery is back in your frame and you are good to go. Oh, it's a 36 volt pack, 630 watt hours, very high capacity. You're gonna get excellent range, especially with the EP8 motor. And coming back to some of these other things, we got a nice dropper seat post and it's not one that has like fixed positions. It's really smooth and dynamic. You can see the, the top tube is sloped here. So you have a relatively low standover height. And once we get into the electric components here, including the power button, it starts to, have some compromises uh, in my opinion. Before we turn it on I want to point you down at the frame right here. This is the charging port and it's a little bit difficult to reach. I mean this is the heavy duty mountain bike. There's no kickstand included and you just sort of have to lean it against the wall or lay it down. You usually want to lay a bike down on the non-drivetrain side which is this side with the disc brakes but those large 203 millimeter rotors they could touch the ground or get bent so just be very careful when you lay it down and keep in mind that somehow you're gonna have to still reach this and plug it in. I believe this is the charger. Shimano has a few different versions and this is the interface. I found it difficult to like plug into the bike. Based on that Marin video we just saw, it sounds like there's also a dongle or something that would attach to this for charging the battery independently. And I've, I've seen Shimano do that a few times it's another piece that could go missing. So I just want to call that out as something to keep track of. This is rated at 1.8 amps. It's not the fastest, but it's also not super big or heavy. So you could take it along with you. And again, the high capacity battery here, I think is going to do pretty well and give you a decent range. Um, but again, you know, look at where it's at. The fender isn't protecting way down there. All of this stuff is highly water and dust and mud resistant, but it's still just a little bit exposed and it's difficult to reach. You just have to bend down or figure out how to lean the bike. And so for me, that's one of the trade-offs. And then you get up here to the, you know, handlebar and kind of the cockpit on the bike. I I'm always wishing that there was like a button here to turn the bike on. Instead, you have to take your hand off and press the power button right here on the bike frame comes to life. You can see it says Shimano Steps. We've got the little reader here. And then we can go up or down in terms of assist level. And there are three. So we start with off, eco, trail, 
boost and they're color coded which is nice especially since it's a smaller inch and a half diagonal display uh, but then there's another button down here this little circle which you can't reach you know my hand would be over here for the shifters and the brake levers so i don't know how you're supposed to do this when you're riding i guess you just kind of leave it alone but right here we've got our current speed then we switch and we get trip distance odometer range a range is really cool because it dynamically updates based on the level of assist so we can see here we're not quite full on the battery 167 kilometers per charge based on recent riding my weight and everything and we go to time it's kind of like a timer average speed max speed cadence cadence is really cool i have been able to get over 120 rpm without losing motor support and that's what you want for a, a mountain bike when you're downshifting into a steep climb clock and then we're back to the beginning. Okay, and you hear that beep every time, including when I change assist levels over here. You can turn that off by holding a little circle button here for a couple seconds, and we get into the menu. You can change the clock. Light is pretty cool, so I'm gonna have to take my finger off here, and I can invert it like that. Brightness, beep, turn the beep off, units, language, adjust, shift timing. Okay, so, you know, a lot of good options here, including options for electronic shifting, but this is mechanical. We do have SLX trigger shifters here on the right. I love that there's, you know, two ways. So you can push or pull the high lever and then multi-shift on the low lever. We got these locking grips, the tiny little, the brake levers with tool-free adjustable reach, the internal cable routing. Marin has, you know, been around since 1986. They're a pioneer in the mountain biking space, Marin, California. Um, Mount Tamalpais is just one of the places where uh, mountain biking really took off and people were sort of tweaking bikes and coming up with, with neat you know, products. So having a, a mullet set up here, this is sort of cutting edge. It's something people appreciate. You don't have to build it yourself. It just comes stock this way. Marin has like a one year comprehensive warranty and I think you get five years on the frame. You buy it through a dealer. I'm actually borrowing this demo bike from Reckless Shipyards in North Vancouver. And this is a good place to ride a bike like this. Maybe give it a try. There are different trim levels. And all in all, I mean, I'm fairly impressed with the bike. It's, it's working well. About 57 pounds on this. I looked at, uh, instead of the, the uh, E2, I looked at the E1 back at the shop it comes in red this one only comes in one color and that one was like 55 pounds i think that's that's about it i like to do the ride tests in trail level so you can really hear that motor and, and get the sense for how powerful this thing can be it does take off like almost instantaneously which is really nice especially if you're you're climbing it catches quickly you don't have to exert yourself and carry the heavy bike before the motor kicks in does tend to tip side to side until you get a little bit of speed and then it starts to be fairly steady. Being able to ride down steps like that with one hand, you know, the bike is, is very planted. It's such a nice rail your drivetrain. Yeah, it just eats the steps, no problem. through those gears. There you go. <laughs> it's the kind of bike you can enjoy on the way to the trail. Maybe just add a couple lights. No problem. Saw some steps over here. Just drop that seat post. Uh, 
awesome. racing up no problem Woo! <laughs> oh, this thing is a blast even in an urban environment oh nice I don't want to damages this too much. I got a pedal strike on the way up these steps, but it's still pretty good. 165 millimeter cranks instead of 170s. You can see we got the little plastic piece on the end so that it doesn't get too damaged. And then these plastic platform pedals here. You got the one fight in. Come on. Oh, keep going. <laughs> Back at the shop, I want to point out that this is a 35 millimeter diameter handlebar, so it's a little bit thicker and sturdier than 31.8 that I see on a lot of you know, trail bikes and hybrid bikes. And back here, you can see the little magnet that the speed sensor for the rear wheel is just tucked in. It's not like a little spoke magnet with a reader here. This is going to be more protected, more durable. It's nice to see that. Well guys, that's the Marin Alpine Trail E2. For the full written review, check out electricbikereview.com. Measured all the specs by hand, and there's a great comparison tool, so you could look at some of the other all-mountain enduro models I've covered recently. There are also some forums, you can chat with people, get some feedback, see how the Marin e-bikes have been holding up over the years. I love you guys, ride safe, and we'll see you on the trail.